Welcome back to Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting, including Comcast losing about $2.8 billion on Peacock. We'll tell you why they're actually kind of happy about that. We'll also dive into Frontier Cable. They're being pushed to be sold. There's some activist investors that really want them to sell at what they think would be the perfect moment to sell. We'll tell you why that's big for core cutting. And Verizon's 5G home internet's coming with a five-year price lock. We'll break that down and a whole lot more for you right now. Now, if you're new here, do me a big favor. Check out the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment. I'll put a link to each story I talk about there. Also, can you help us grow? Let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here? Just hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. Let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. So YouTube recommends our videos to more people helping us grow, hopefully helping you break free from the high cost of TV, but still watch the shows you enjoy. So with that said, Let's dive into it. Comcast Peacock will lose about $2.8 billion this year. It's actually slightly better than some feared it would lose. And it hits 30 million subscribers. That's big news. Now, Peacock is still lagging behind a lot of other services like uh, Paramount Plus, uh, Max, and more. But uh, Peacock has been slowly building, slowly growing. Now, it really does help that they have a lot of big sporting deals. The Big Ten's on there. Um, a few exclusive games, Notre Dame and other um, pro sporting events are coming up on two exclusive NFL games later this month and next month, one including it being a playoff game, which is a pretty great deal. But they still expect to lose $2.8 billion. War Brothers Discovery CEO kind of made a jab at them for that, but Comcast believes this is the peak that is downhill from here. They hope to become more and more profitable or maybe more and more less unprofitable. Maybe is a better way to say that in the years to come with this. Now, this also comes as Comcast just got a big check for Hulu. Um, now, Disney's reportedly paid them the first installment. They're still waiting for the final evaluation of Hulu before the sales complete. And if there's a difference, if Disney owes them more, they'll pay more at that point. But for now, Comcast is feeling good about their future streaming plans. We'll see if that plays out. I'm very interested to see how this all works together. Will Comcast actually be able to make Peacock profitable? I've said this for years. There are more streaming services now than the market can support. Some of these services just won't make it. The question now is who? What services will go under? There's a lot of small ones that very likely could, but I bet there'll be one or two big ones where companies just at some point decide it's just not worth it. Do I think that's Peacock? No, not right now. Could it be Peacock? It could be anyone. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you have any predictions on that. All right, Frontier Cable is facing pressure to sell its business. Frontier Cable is a, one of the top 10 largest cable TV providers in the United States, live TV period, and it offers a, uh, millions of customers uh, internet service and TV services. Now, they're facing a lot of pressure from one of their investors to sell the company. There was rumors for a little while that T-Mobile was apparently going to be the buyer of it. Now, it wouldn't surprise me at all if T-Mobile actually looked at them. T-Mobile's been rolling out fiber in a lot of markets. Buying Frontier could help jump start that. T-Mobile came out and said, no, we're not going to do that. Probably looked at it, probably said this wasn't a good use of their money. But they're now facing pressure. The question here is, who would buy a cable TV company? And I do think there's a lot of investment firms, a lot of other companies will do it. And I actually think a lot of their competitors would love to get their hands on them. Um, we saw this in radio, iHeartRadio being a big one of this, buying up all these small little radio stations and networks back when it was, um, oh, what was it before I, um, Heart Radio, Clear Channel, there we go, Clear Channel is the name. They bought up all these companies, became iHeart uh, Media, uh, also known as iHeartRadio, and I think there's a lot of cable companies that would love to do the same. We've already seen a lot of very small cable companies be bought up by bigger ones, would not surprise me to start seeing some mid-sized ones, maybe some slightly larger ones like Frontier being bought up. We'll see how that plays out, but Frontier is very serious about their efforts here. They're working very hard to uh, grow. Will they sell? Will they push back against their investors? We'll have to wait and see. All right, speaking of um, fiber and home internet, 5G home internet is one of the biggest competitors to that, and Verizon's offering a five-year price lock for a limited time. Typically, they only offer a two-year price lock for their services or three year, depending on which plan you get. F between now and middle of January, exact dates in the stories down below, you can get a five year price like on 
of Ryzen 5G home internet, which is a really nice deal to know your price won't be going up for five years on the base plan of your 5G home internet service. If you're interested in learning more about that, link in the show notes down below. It's currently at $35 or $45 a month, depending on which plan you pick with a um, one of their uh, compatible wireless phone plans also with that. But that brings me to an interesting topic. 5G home internet is becoming a competitive threat as availability grows. There's a growing number of analysts out there that are pointing to 5G home internet as a serious impact. This cord cutting 2.0 I talk about all the time. The idea that you can ditch cable TV and go 100% in on streaming and 100% away from their internet services is becoming a reality thanks to things like Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, and other companies offering 5G home internet. Very nice to see this growth here. We'll see how this all plays out, but they say that they expect this to continue to happen. In the first quarter of um, 2023, T-Mobile alone added more 5G home internet customers than all traditional broadband competitors combined. And T-Mobile has been seeing, and Verizon have been seeing very strong growth. Now we're seeing AT&T get in on this. I would not be surprised at all to see 5G home internet someday become one of the largest providers of home internet services out there, right up there with cable and fiber as internet providers. All right, did you know your library can be a great cord cutting tool? There's a lot of libraries that offer free streaming through Hoopla and Canopy of movies and television shows. There's a lot of other resources that public libraries offer. If you have not considered using your public library, you don't even have to go into it once you create an account. You can stream stuff straight through your Roku, Fire TV, and more. But I would highly encourage you to check it out. We have a story in the show notes down below and in the first pinned comment about how your public library can help you save money. Really would encourage you to try it out. Check out your public library. So much good stuff. You're paying for it with your taxes, right? Even if your rent, your rent includes the taxes on that building. Um, typically, the landlord priced it right. And so you're helping pay for that. So go ahead and take advantage of that free movies, free television shows, often ad free also, maybe DVDs in the library. There's all kinds of sources. We have a full list of it down at corecarsnews.com in the link. Deal of the day, Roku has a Roku Ultra sale going on, lowest price ever. This is lower than Black Friday. The Roku Ultra this week dropped down to $66.99, down from its Black Friday price of $69. Kind of a surprise to see the sale right after Black Friday, but it's a better deal than what we saw during Black Friday. Check it out. It's Roku's most powerful streaming player in the market right now. If you live in Miami, you may need to rescan your channels. One more station is launched ATSE 3.0 in the area. Good news is the 1.0 still works, but you may need to rescan your TV for your antenna. If you own an antenna, you're probably used to that. If you're not, Google the make of your TV and how to scan for channels and it should answer your question there. So check that out, link in the show notes down below if you wanna find out more. But now, I believe this means all major um, TV stations in the Miami area now offer ATSC 3.0. If you have a Google TV device, whether it's a smart TV or a streaming player, they have a advent calendar with 25 festive streaming surprises leading up to Christmas. Check it out on the home screen. There's a row there now where every day a new streaming surprise unlocks, movies and others, all about Christmas. So check it out. Advent calendar for Google TV, now live. Hulu added a ton of content over the weekend. One of the things that got a lot of attention is Who Was the Boss is now streaming on Hulu, the classic um, TV show out there, wildly popular hit that ran from 1984 to 1992 is now streaming included with your Hulu subscription. Check it out, who's the boss? Any fans of the show there, leave me a comment, let me know. Also, Amazon's Freebie, the free ad support streaming services, added 16 new live channels from Warner Brothers Discovery and says even more programming will be coming in early 2024. This includes a 24 seven CNN headlined um, set up uh, channel, much like the old CNN headline news channel that just did breaking news now streaming through Amazon Freebie. They have others like Bachelor Nation, the FBI, Say Yes to the Dress, The Repair Shop, and more. Those are just a fraction of the uh, 16 new live channels that came on the market. There's also a few of the ones they say are coming in early 2024 in the story. If you wanna see all of them, check out the show notes. I'll have a link to the story there. And lastly, before we get into the questions of the day, 
Be careful, this is a public service announcement. There are a growing number of scams targeting core cutters. We've been getting a lot of it out there recently. Um, Shelby did a great breakdown of all the scams, but be very careful of email deals promising you to save tons of money if you sign up for a year plan or whatever it may be. Link in the show notes down below to Shelby's story about being careful about scams targeting core cutters. But let me be very clear here. Scammers have turned their eyes to core cutters because we're becoming so numerous and it's kind of a new scam. We're used to this time of year of getting special deals from like Hulu for 99 cents a month for 12 months kind of deal. What we're seeing now is scammers are sending out emails with similar deals to steal your login, steal your credit card and other similar scams. Be careful, check that out. Take things with a grain of salt when you see it in an email. All right, let's dive into the question of the day. Now, every day I answer questions. If you have a question for me, leave a comment down below. Start it off with something like a question for Luke, so I know it's something you want me to answer here. If I didn't answer your question, re-ask it, because sometimes I just didn't see it before I picked a question. But I got a question here um, that says, do cable and satellite providers offer local only packages without having to actually buy um, larger cable packages. Yes, they're actually required to do that by the FCC. They have to offer a basic package. Often these are in the SD. I think sometimes some cable providers have moved them up to HD. They just include a collection of channels that are typically free over the air. My parents had this. They paid for 20 bucks a month. Now this was years ago. They got an SD version of ABC, NBC, Fox, and a couple ones like Home Shopping Network and the like. We got the Nintendo set it up, and they went from SD to HD. All the channels Comcast paid them, and a ton of other ones for free in better picture quality. So yes, there are a uh, basic ones, and I understand that not everybody lives where the Nintendo will give them free channels. I lived in Mark Twain National Forest when I cut the cord. I lived in a valley, zero over the air channels, not even with an exterior roof mounted antenna. So the truth here is, I understand that not everybody lives in an area where antennas work, but for the 90% of you who it does, you definitely should consider getting an antenna because it's going to be a whole lot cheaper in the long run. 20 bucks a month versus a $50 one-time antenna that they've had now for, I don't know, five plus years at this point. That's a lot of money saved. Hopefully that helped you out. If you have a question, let me comment down below. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. So YouTube recommends our videos to more people. We'll be back again real soon with another video.